What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. So I'm in an island, the country, Camarones. Exactly, this is Camarones Island. Look how short our people are here in Camarones. <laughs> well, very short guys. How tall are you? Uh, one meter and fifty-six. He about he about four foot ten. <laughs> so anyway, this is my friend right here, John Claude. He's right here from the country of Camarones, and we're right here by the mosque, as you can hear. This is the call to prayer. Exactly. And the call to prayer is up because there are 95% Muslims here in on this island. Am I correct? Yeah, right. It's correct. Yeah, all right. So we're going to go around and we're going to show you more of the Camarose Island. All right, family, let's get into this right here. So as we're cruising along, you know, I had arrived and, you know, my man John, John Claude showed me around. Let me give you a little history of Camaros because it was a colonized African country and it's still an African country. But it is an independent country made up of three islands in southeastern Africa, located at the northern end of the Mozambique Channel in the Indian Ocean. Its capital and largest city is Moroni. The religion of the majority of the population and the official state religion is Sunni Islam. That's right. Arabs had a huge impact uh, years before even the Europeans came over and colonized it during the Berlin Conference of 1885. You had the Arab slave trade, so let's just keep that in mind. But the, re the, the majority religion is the Sunni Islam. Cameroon proclaimed its independence from France on 6 July 1975. A member of the Arab nation, as well as African Union and Organization International of the Francophonie, um, because its currency is still tied within the Fran Franken uh, phone uh, money. The sovereign state consists of three major islands and numerous smaller islands, all of the volcanic Comoros Islands, with the exception of Mayotte. Interesting enough, family, Mayotte voted against its independence from France in a referendum in the 1974 and continues to be a minister by France. Um, you know, I find that very interesting. They didn't, will not sever the ties because of the assistance that France is giving, or let's just say they think it's assistance. But sad to say, when you see where we're cruising through here on this island, you know that it is dilapidated in despair, terrible roads, buildings falling apart, here on the island of um, Camarose. Let me continue. You know, it was here at the hotel that I stayed in, the Golden Tulip, uh, where they had a function here of the locals there and um, good to see them dressed up and had a, a ceremony of such and got to hear some singing going on um, from another building. But uh, yeah, it was here at the Golden Tulip. Um, but this is the rear of the Golden Tulip beautiful ocean, great view, and you get to see down the shoreline uh, going into the main capital city there on the island. As I said, this island is, is a volcanic island, so as you can see, the volcanic rocks that there on the shore, it's not too many beach line with sand. Even though they did have a spot there at the hotel, you'd go north of the island and you'll find where most of the uh, tourists go to sand beaches. But the Cameroons were likely first settled by the Austronesians and the Malagasy Magall people, followed by the Bantu speakers from the East Africa. And it became part of the French colonial empire during the 19th century before its independence in 75. It has experienced more than 20 coups or attempt coups with various heads of states assassins. If you know anything about them French people, the French country, even today, if you look up uh, Mali, Niger, uh, uh, Burkina Faso, the French have always assassinated these leaders who wanted their independence or those who did not want the so-called control from France because France always wanted to take advantage of the resources out of these African countries. So they've done over 20 coups in these countries here in the Comoros Islands. 
And along with the constant political instability, it has one of the worst levels of income inequalities of any nation and ranks in its lowest quartal on the Human Development Index. As of 2008, about half the population lived below the international poverty line of a U.S. dollar of one of one dollar and twenty five cents per day. You know, I'll say this right here. It is a shame when I see the state of this country, I see that it's um, in desperate need of repair. And the people living in poverty, though they're impoverished, uh, living, they're very friendly people. The weather, the weather while I was there was rainy, cloudy, and I really missed the sun. But it's out there in the middle of the Indian Ocean, so um, I'm quite sure it has its share of rain and it has its share of cloudiness and all. Um, but this right here is the view that you will see from the hotel. John Claude took me also into the marketplace where you see the hustle and bustle like typical market places around the world. Everybody's, you know, getting in to fit in to you know, sell their goods, make their money, make their living. And, you know, the island itself, it produces over 300 tons of coffee bean. Uh, it has, uh, it sells oil from various flowers that it, it's grown there. And um, it uh, receives a lot, a heavy amount of, of imports because it's an island whether it's from China and other surrounding countries that in order for people to survive and eat and have their goods. You know, uh, when John claude showed me around and, you know, I got to see just so many people. I want you all to uh, watch my next video with an interview with John claude And we sit here in the market and we talk about the Sharia law, the Muslim law, you know, that old law that you steal, you get your hand cut off, you kill, your life is taken. Uh, even stoned and he said um, you know he's known of a couple people who have lost their hand for taking something that was not theirs uh, so please check out those videos that are coming forward now I just want you all just to kind of uh, watch as we go through the marketplace and we begin to drive through some of the other interesting parts of the country but I want you right here to be able to take note of the road conditions, the housing, uh, how everything is just falling apart. I didn't see anything really necessarily newly built. Uh, people are just, you know, barely holding on, trying to hold on and, you know, have a living. I found it really even interesting that a lot of the cars that have broken down on the side of the roads, they're stripped and just left there, not picked up, not put away, but you just see them all over the place. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that whether the government can't find uh, connections with other uh, surrounding countries to do business, to build a country, uh, maybe to try to create jobs uh, I'm not in that political arena but you see these dilapidated buildings and small towns that really uh, very few people are living in and there's just so much opportunity that I could see that if industries came in and can make uh, uh, whether it's hotels and restaurants what have you to draw more of a tourist in this part of the city that people could be able to have jobs and maybe be able to even uh, have a more comfortable life than what we see with these roads and these buildings that fall apart. We gonna play? 
I, I've already whipped her family. She she's teaching me, but I already won game one. <laughs> Am I right? But there is a second part. You will see. I'll do my best. What is the name of this game? Braha. 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 Uh -huh. Here in Cameroon. Yes. You from what island? Mujeli. She from Muheli. It's the smallest island. The smallest island. In the three islands, yes. All right. I just want to thank each and every one of you all and, you know, continue to follow my my journey on each one of the African countries. I'm on my 33rd country of Africa. I got 21 more to go. And I'm just giving a taste to show you all Africa is not as what some may seem in um, the state of fighting wars all the time or starvations or, you know, disease infested. But you're going to find some countries that are more thriving than others. But I'm off to my next venture. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all.